Good evening, everybody, and, uh, and welcome to our carol service. It's, uh, it's lovely to have you all here with us this afternoon. Um, now, we've got the children are all prepared out the back there, and they're going to come in in a minute. Um, we're going to keep the lights on for most of the service so we can actually see what we're doing, uh, if that's all right, particularly because the band needs to see their music. Um, but we are going to light candles, but we decided to light the candles after the children have been up here um, as a safety thing. Um, it's great if you're here um, and you're not usually um, a work, someone who attends here, uh, welcome. It's fantastic to have you with us. Just to let you know that if you ever need to get out of the building in a hurry, there's an exit here at the front and there are exits at the back, and we will meet in the car park. We're going to uh, start our carol service this evening with a carol, which is wonderful, called Joy to the World, the Lord is Come. Let's stand and let's sing it through together. Thank you. <laughs> first Bible reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Amen. We're going to sing a carol that says, It was on a starry night. And I would invite you to stand. Don't worry, it's a bleeper that uh, we every now and then goes off and it just tells us to open a couple of windows. So we're going to do that just now. But I invite you to stand. And as we sing this carol, um, there is opportunity for us to take, uh, to give in an offering. Uh, just now as we sing the carol. Don't feel obliged if you're a guest, but for our regular members, we would love an opportunity to give to the work of our church. So I invite you to stand, and as we sing this, we'll, you'll see a plate going round if you wish to give something. Thank you. Let's stand. <laughs>
we continue to read in Luke chapter 2 that that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but an angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary <clears throat> kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. <clears throat> and the band are going to help us think about those words. Mary pondered. Mary thought about these things over and over again. Thank you.
Mary pondered and remembered all these things in her heart. And I wonder what things come to your mind as you approach Christmas. Part of our carol service today was about us getting to know one another. And I thought that it'd be lovely to hear from a couple in our core, in our church, um, Alan and Linda Waters. And I said to them, would you come up and just have a little conversation between you about some of those memories of Christmas that you have? And I think you'll find them quite interesting of where they've been. So I'll leave you to it. It's the joys of getting old. Um, this is lovely, isn't it? Are you, are you quite comfortable? Quite happy? I, I absolutely love carol services and carol concerts and Christmas Day services. Christmas is just one of those wonderful seasons. And uh, Linda and I have had the privilege of, of um, experiencing it in a number of places um, where we have lived. Um, and I suppose the most um, exotic, I guess, would be having been in the Southern Hemisphere and had Christmas in the sunshine and um, experienced Christmas in other languages and in other cultures. Um, and, and some of those Christmas carol services that we've experienced have been very traditional. Um, others have been very non-traditional. And some have even been Victorian in style to the extent that everybody that came along were all dressed in Victorian outfits. And the, and the band and the songsters and the platform and everything was all done out as a Victorian street. We've experienced those kind of things as well as the very simple Christmases. Language was sometimes a little bit of a problem. And um, some of the things that we experienced, um, particularly when it came to um, carol concerts or, or carol um, services, where things were announced, um, and, and, and some of it was lost in translation. So, for example, the band later on this evening, um, at the very end, I think, is going to play um, a march entitled The Spirit of Christmas. Well, we were in an area of southern Africa where that was totally lost in translation, and it came out as the band will now play The Ghost of Christmas. <laughs> so, I don't know what it'll sound like a little bit later on. But anyway, by way of introduction, that's uh, tell you a little bit of our background. Do you remember our open air carol services? Yeah, yeah. Once a year we would gather, um, when we were in, in Johannesburg, we gathered on a, a, a raised area, like a, a slight hill, um, and had open air carol services there with a stage, with live sheep, um, and a donkey, and camels. It hmm. was absolutely wonderful. Thousands of people sitting with their picnics and singing carols uh, together. We were given the countdown to light up. And in the Southern Hemisphere, um, the sun sort of sets at roughly the same uh, time each, day, each night. Um, and so when the countdown was given, thousands of these little glittering candles were seen. What a wonderful sight and memories that we will never forget. They happened all over the country and Salvation Army bands and songsters were often a part of these. I think one of the things I liked about those was that you saw all those candles lit on the ground mm. and as you looked up you saw the African night sky with the stars that you just could not imagine. And I, I've often thought, I wonder what the shepherds felt like when the angels appeared to them. We were just awestruck with the candles and the stars. What about the angels? I remember also um, carol concerts with the uh, South African Naval Band um, in the waterfront area of Cape Town, if anybody's ever been to Cape Town. That great city, the waterfront area, is a tourist attraction, second to none. 
and we would sit and we would play the carols and hundreds of people would join in and just sing along with a band. What an experience that was. Tourists, tourists wanting us to play everything under the sun that uh, they kind of wanted uh, to remind themselves of back home, uh, I suppose, in the cold and in the wet. I can recall a carol service held at Gainsborough when we were the, the COs there. Um, and I can remember sitting on the platform and it was in the days when health and safety, before health and safety kicked in and everybody had a candle. And I focused on a little seven or eight year old boy on the front row of seats. And he had his candle and directly above it, he had his program. And I sat there nearly having a heart attack and I kept on looking and trying to find his mother. But just in time, his mother stepped forward and saved the day. But through the years, I can remember many occasions where you just held your breath and prayed. Mm, yeah. Do, do you remember the first, the first Christmas we had when we came to the UK, way back in the 80s. Um, we were in Brighton. It was the coldest winter we'd ever experienced. The snow had come down, it was the biggest snowfall that that part of England had experienced in 50 years. And um, we, were, we were appointed, actually we'd come through Belfast um, and we were on our way to the training college and the Salvation Army asked us if we would run a little corps in the south of England for a few months waiting to get into Bible College. And we agreed to that. We went to Brighton. We, it turned out that we spent 18 months there. And our first Christmas in the United Kingdom after coming from the sunny southern hemisphere um, was this 50, 50 year deep freeze that we went into. And um, we had a little, we no, had no band at the core, and we had a little songster brigade of six, six little old ladies, every single one of them well over 75. And they said to us, now envoy, we're going caroling. <laughs> and I said, L like where? And they said, out there. And, um, well, we dressed for the weather. We went out into the, into the cold and, and into the damp, and I couldn't figure out how were we going to do caroling. Six little old ladies. Well, do you remember? They had one of these old pedal organs. You know the, I believe you've got one in the roof space here. There's a little pedal, you know, and they pedaled like mad, and the one lady, she must have been well in her 80s, she played the organ. She was a retired officer, and they, and, and they took this out, and they went to all the high-rise blocks of flats in Brighton. And we went up in the lift to the very top floor. And they opened the doors of the, of the lift, jammed the organ in the door so it wouldn't close. <laughs> the lady played the organ. Two of them sang, the others ran down the corridor, knocking on doors, collecting money, coming back, and we did all our Christmas caroling nearly every night of the week. I couldn't believe it. I thought, what have I let ourselves in for coming here? But uh, what an experience that was. In contrast to being in Venda in the um, very north of Southern Africa, on the Zimbabwe border, where... Um, a small group of African children because they knew that we had come from the UK came to sing Christmas carols and sang carols that spoke about the snow and the cold and for most of them they would never have seen anything like it that was a heart touching moment for us it yeah. reminds me of going up with Cape Town Citadel Band when we were the core officers there and playing at Sea Point on the beachfront. Um, and loads of British expats lived in Cape Town. And they would always request, in a 35 degree temperature, see amid the winter snow. 
just needed that little reminder of home. And we in the band, of course, we were sweating it out in our uniforms, perspiration pouring down our faces, and all the expats there all with tears coming down their faces singing, in the bleak midwinter. I was thinking, for goodness sake, you can have that if you want. But there we are. Well, we probably ought to hurry along, yeah. shouldn't we? Because we can keep you here for a while. <laughs> Just uh, quickly, Christmas Day meals we always had at call that we served. Um, and I can always remember our children were probably ranged from the age of about eight or ten at that time. And they were always the servers on Christmas Day. And we then had our Christmas meal on Boxing Day. And that's how we did it for many, many years in many appointments. Um, we, we provided meals in Cape Town for a hundred street children who used to stand on street corners in the City Bowl. And we provided a cooked meal for them and uh, brought some joy just for a few hours into their lives. Also for homeless men and women in the City Bowl area full Christmas dinner with all the trimmings. Mm. Um, and they, most of them took a little bit, a, a little bag of some of the leftovers home with them because they would have it the next day. And they finished off with mince pie and a cup of tea um, and then left with a gift. And those folk we picked up, we used to do a, a soup run every night of the week, all through the year, teams of people going out. And it was from that group of people that we met on the streets mm that gathered in our hall at Christmas time for those meals. Well, they were good memories and we could keep you here all night telling you all kinds of stories, but we haven't got time for that, and neither of you. Because um, there's tea in there afterwards, isn't there? <laughs> and we want to get to that too. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing uh, something of your memories and to hook on to those memories. If you do know of anyone who's on their own here on Christmas Day, we may not have the sunshine and the perspiration, depending on whether the heating is up high or not, uh, but we will be sharing here on Christmas Day. So if you are on your own or you'd like to come and share Christmas Day with us or you know of anyone who's on their own, then do come along. We'll, we'll have our meeting on Christmas Day at 10.30 and then we will have the rest of the day to share in friendship and food. So there's another thing to think about. But we're going to sing again, and we're going to sing a Once in Royal David's City. And just to help Chloe be encouraged, I invite you to stand up with me. Let's sing together, and Chloe will lead us, and then we'll join in the second verse.
Our next Bible reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. But to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the rights to become children of God. Children not born of a husband's, uh, of, of natural descent, or born of a human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and, ma <coughs> and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, you might be wondering what those video scenes are, or you might recognize some of the places. Perhaps you've been to Peary Park uh, to watch a football, uh, a rugby, sorry. I know, I've offended you, Reuben, haven't I? A rugby match, not a football match. We asked the young people, the teenagers in our church, to give us a, a little glimpse of where they spend time during the week. So some of those, there's a school footing, um, footage, I think that might be Isaac's school or Olivia's school. Uh, there's Ruben's uh, ground where he plays rugby. There's Benjamin's lounge uh, where he plays video games. There's Amy's studio at the BBC where she reads the news. There's the ducks at the Murray household and the time that they spend looking after their pets. And we were asking the question, where is it that Jesus is? Where is Jesus? And the community choir sang to us that lovely song that says that Christmas is not just for the season. It's a gift that is wrapped in love. There's Rebecca's uni uh, community room. That's where she spends her week. 
And you know, the words that Jesus, uh, that Chris read to us speak about Jesus moving into our neighborhood. Jesus being where we are. Now, I'm not very good at logistics, and as usual, I've probably bitten more than I can chew. But I wonder whether Chris might just ask a couple of the youngsters, maybe the children at the back, or anybody that wants to help, just to make sure that everybody gets one of these little parcels. Uh, there's one for everybody. If there's two in there, it might be that you're a couple. Uh, I wonder who in the back, oh, Cheryl's coming to the rescue, of course, thank you, and Olivia, thank you. It's just giving them out, that's all it is. I'm always relying on keen volunteers. In that little bag, you will find the words of the chorus that we've just heard sung to us. The words say, God is hidden no more. He has spoken his mind wrapped the gift of his love in the stuff of mankind. Now his nature is known. God is love undefiled, and his love is revealed in the face of a child. Now you might get this little plastic bag with a little star that represents something of this child, this mystery, this gift of Christmas, this light what you may not realize is what the bag is. Anybody recognize these little bags? No prize to the, well, I can give you a prize if you guess. We had about a hundred of these. They are the little bags that our COVID tests were supposed to go into. And I'm sorry, but I try and reduce waste in our house as much as possible. And I kept those and I said to the Lord, Lord, one day, these are gonna come in handy. And as I was thinking of these verses, this song kept going round and round in my mind. God has wrapped the gift of his love in the stuff of mankind. And for me, this bag represents the stuff that we as a world have been through, that we as a family have been through, that I as an individual have been through. The stuff of, of our youngsters is, is in front of us on the screen. And I wonder what your stuff is or what your stuff has been in this past year. Maybe the thought of a COVID test bag actually is quite unpleasant for you. I pray it's not too unpleasant this evening because we just want to say that Christ, oh, and they're not used, by the way, they're clean, <laughs> in case you're worried. <laughs> I, we just never used them, they, it seemed a bit of a waste. Christ's love is wrapped in your stuff, and there's nothing about the stuff that is in your life that is beyond the gift of Jesus' love. That's what Christmas is about. That's what this evening is about. That's why we gather here in our church. That's why we spend Christmas Day here together, because we believe that Christ is in our stuff, in the mess, in the mess of our world today as it continues to be in a mess, in our own brokenness. And it's a gift that brings hope and love, and it's not just for Christmas. So we're gonna sing that lovely carol that says, Silent Night, and the phrase repeats again and again, Jesus Christ is here. He's here in this service, but he's also here in the COVID mess and stuff that we've experienced. And he's here in us and in what we are going through. He's in Ukraine. He's in those who are seeking refuge in our country. He's in our service as a Salvation Army. Let's sing together. Thank you.
Thank you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you're here and that you are here right in the stuff of our lives. Lord, as we um, consider what Christmas means for us, we pray that we will discover you in a new way this Christmas. We thank you that we've been preparing for your coming. As a church, we have taken time each week to prepare so that this gift is ours again and we discover you afresh. And we pray that each one of us will know the closeness of God's presence and to know that you can be with us and it makes the world of a difference. Lord, be with our world. Be in all the broken places that we think of just now. May your peace, may your grace, may your love come into our world where it is not. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Take your seats. As we've, as we've looked back at the reminiscing in South Africa, we've also thought of the present and how Jesus is with us here. And I thought to end our evening, we would just think about, well, what about the days to come? What about the Christmases to come? And I thought I'd ask Temra, so, Tamra, what kind of hopes do you have for the future of Christmas, even within our church? What kind of hopes are raised for you this Christmas? I think despite recession, despite us being through COVID, despite us having lost people because of a closed church, I have a lot of hope and I actually have a lot of positivity. Um, the number of people that I speak to that say, our church at the minute has a lovely atmosphere. And I think we need to nurture that. Um, I feel our church will grow, and, and I mean in terms of growing together, growing spiritually, as well as the opportunity we have to grow in numbers. But I think as part of that, the growing in numbers starts with encouraging people that are here now. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the future of our church, it's in this room. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to encourage, mentor, nurture the people we have we talk about that in terms of youth but i also think it's important when we look at people maybe not so young mm -hmm. um, we think about gifts that people have and sometimes when you think about gifts you think about the big ones the prophecy the preaching the outreach but it's also the smaller gifts the gifts of encouragement the gifts of organization of management of administration things like that that are required for a church to run. And I think that's where we need to focus our future and actually spread the love, mm -hmm. spread the love of our church. And as well as then thinking about the people within our church, the next step is thinking about those who maybe were part of our church mm -hmm. and for whatever reason aren't. And they're the low hanging fruit. We should be able to encourage them back in to be with us and they might be different, and they might not think the same, they might not look the same, that doesn't matter. When somebody walks in through this church, what do they see, what do they feel? If they're worried about sitting on somebody's seat, are they worried that they just see a band, they just see music, and think I'm not good enough? People walking in through our doors, for whatever reason, whether that be line dancing, coffee morning, they should be faced with a wall of love. And that's where we need to be focusing as well as then the outreach after that. You know, we are told quite clearly, love one another, mm -hmm. love your neighbour as yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is a task at this Christmas time and going forward that everybody needs to be thinking. The encouragement doesn't need to be a whole testimony. It could be a, hi, how are you? Are you okay? It's great to see you. The number of people that actually are touched by that because we don't know what's going on in each other's lives. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all somebody needs when they're at their lowest is a smile, a hug, a cup of coffee handed to them. So I have a lot of hope and positivity, especially when we see the kids. So we need to nurture them, need to make sure they are here for the future. But everyone else sitting here yeah. is our future as well. Yeah. It's about yeah. keeping them before we replace them. Yeah, yeah. On Friday, we were chatting to the, the youth that come to our board games night. 
Um, and I was asking them, so what hopes do you have for the future? And they were so excited about the future of our church and the future of a church that is active, a church that is peaceful. And they even used the word populous, and I nearly had to look it up in the dictionary. They, they were trying to say, we, we really want a church that is vibrant and a church that is alive. So I thank God for you, and I thank God for every person who's here and for the difference that each of us make uh, in making everyone feel welcome who come to our various different activities. So we hope that you've been welcome today, and we hope that you'll share with us in, in tea and coffee and a mince pie afterwards. Um, but we're going to sing another carol. Thank you, Temra. We're going to sing one more carol before the band bring us their last piece this evening. O oh, come, all ye faithful. Amen. What a fantastic, fantastic celebration. Please take your seats. Please take your seats. Well, Christmas, we've got so much to look forward to, haven't we? Are the children, are you looking forward to Christmas? Yay! Adults, are you looking forward to Christmas? <laughs> I am looking forward to Christmas. And we have such hope and so much to celebrate because Christ is here. And he's with us. And the band is just now going to bring to us um, a uh, fantastic celebration. It's simply called Christmas Festival. And uh, I just want you to rejoice with the band as they pray and as they celebrate and as we, we just say what a wonderful world it is when Christ is with us. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. Well, we're just going to uh, bring our carol service to a close now with a final carol. Just a quick note, we do have some tea and coffee and um, I believe some mince pies as well. Um, so please do stop and uh, have a chat and a, and a drink with us. We've also got some newsletters out in the foyer. Please take one with you. There's some information there on what's happening um, in, in the weeks and days ahead. Some important information there. Um, so thank you very much and uh, God bless you. Final carol, Heart the Herald Angels Sing. Let's stand. Thank you. Amen. May the hope and the love, the peace and the joy of this Christmas time be yours and your families. Amen. God bless you.